G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today's project together, I've created a brand new series that I'm pretty excited about and it is a little cloth doll series. They are a cuddle doll, so they're actually quite cuddly and squishy. They've got a universal body that we're going to be putting with several different animals. The first one, of course, is this beautiful little elephant. Now, so many of you ask me for patterns and projects that just use material, just use fabric. So this one is it, and I'm gonna keep this whole series along the same lines. So lots of little animals to look forward to in this series. This is so quick and easy to make, and I think it's important that we are able to dive into our stash. All of us have so many scraps and pieces. This one is perfect. Of course, first in the series is a beautiful little elephant. There will be many, many more. You'll find, uh, you'll find her in this case, simple and easy to make up and actually very, very quick. So one simple neck joint and the rest is all stitched. Lovely, huggable little arms. You can soft fill it. The sky's the limit with your colors, of course. So you're going to need your free pattern. I've got that all ready for you. It is in the description drop down box below, just where the little gray arrow is on the corner. And you'll be able to find your free pattern templates. You can print those pattern templates out on your own home printer. Now do follow the measuring guide that I have on each of those pattern template pages to make sure your pattern pieces are right. You may have to adjust your printer settings depending on where you are in the world. Generally, if you print at actual size, A4 or letter, give them a try. And if you ever have any printing issues, be sure to ask me in the comments for any help that you might need. So let's get busy making number one in a series of beautiful cuddle dolls. So let's start by running through our materials and requirements. You do have a list in that description box below, but I do like to show you what we're going to need. So we're going to start with the main body pieces. It's a very simple pattern. The body front and back pieces are exactly the same, except on your body back, you've got some marks. One is for your tail, and the other one is for the opening that we need to leave for stuffing. So the fabric that I've chosen is a really, really bright, colorful fabric. I'm going for a look that is like a little pair of rompers um, and then a plain colored head with plain colored arms. I'm probably going to put a ruffle around the neck as well. So this will look like the little elephant is dressed already. So this is the color scheme I'm going for. Nice and bold and bright. Do make sure that you transfer your markings. Now these pieces are just cut from obviously quilting fabric and I have fusible medium weight woven interfacing applied to those pieces. So that's your body sorted. You will be adding some feet, little foot pads in the bottom, little round foot pads and I've cut those from felt with interfacing applied to in a color that suits your project. Felt does work best for this. That's the only felt we use in this project though. And then we're going to have a look at our head. So our head pieces, if you've made my other patchwork elephant, it's put together almost exactly the same. So we've got our two side head pieces. Now it's important to keep those side head pieces, the print reasonably plain or a very small print so that when we pop our eyes in, that they're nice and visible. Then that center gusset that goes over the top of the head, you can make that quite colorful, which I have here. This is part of the same story as this fabric. It's all going to blend nicely. They all also have the, that fusible woven interfacing applied to it. We're then going to need to cut, to cut two pairs of ears. So you've got an inner ear and an outer ear. The outer ear is the same fabric that I've cut the headpiece in and the inside ear is that same print of that top. So we're bringing those patterns in together and making them work. Of course, you could have it all different all the way through, totally up to you. These ears need to be nice and soft and floppy so we don't add any interfacing to those at all. So you've got your two pairs of ears. I do like to add a couple of buttons on the front of mine to make it look like little rompers. 
So I've got two gorgeous little buttons that are gonna work with that. Of course, you could decorate the front of yours any way you like. Now moving on to the arms. The arms are really simple. And the best way to make these and keep it simple is I've taken my fabric and I've put right sides together. It's the same fabric as I use for the head. And I've pressed that nice and flat and I've drawn around my arm, arm shape with a heat erasable marker. So I've got my two there. We're going to be stitching on that line and then cutting it out. It is the easiest way to make arms and also we have no interfacing on those pieces at all. You're going to need one, one joint and that is for the neck. You can check out my jointing videos. Have a look at both of them. There's quite a bit of information there if you want to use an alternative method. This is a 45 millimeter neck joint. Also, you'll need some eyes. 10, 10 millimeter eyes are about the best size for this little elephant. You can go a little smaller, but I wouldn't go bigger because they do generally have quite small eyes. I'm just using black glass teddy bear eyes. You can use safety eyes with this one and I'll tell you when we need to add those. So the last thing that um, we're going to be adding, I'm adding a little plaited tail. So I'm just using some coordinating yarn. I'm gonna plait it up, make a little braid that we're gonna pop into the back seam. You'll need your extra strong threads in colors that match. And we're going to be filling with polyester filling. So that's about it for our materials and requirements. And we're going to get started on the body. Now the body that we're about to make is the body that I use for all of the animal dolls in this series. So even though the colors may change um, throughout, all of the bodies put together in the same way. It just saves me having to film that section all over again each time and it will allow me to give you a whole lot more of a range in this little series. So just follow along regardless of the animal that you're making, this is how you put that body together. The first step in creating the body, we're going to take our two back body pieces and where the opening marks are, we're going to sew a close zigzag stitch on the machine on the edge there, just to bind those edges. It stops it from fraying, and when we go to close that opening, it's going to be nice and neat and tidy, and it won't stretch. So our next step is to create a little tail. Now, I've made a plait with my yarn, just a little braid, and left some ends free at the end there. I've just tied a knot in the end and stitched across here. So this is the end we're gonna pop into the seam. Mine's about 13 centimeters overall. You can make it long or short or whatever you like. So we're going to be sewing the center back seams of the both the front and the back body pieces. So these are our front body pieces that don't have any marks on them. So the center front seam are these ones here. So where your mark is at the back, your opening, these are the center back and center front seams. So in the, in the front pieces, we just put those right sides together and we're just going to stitch with a four millimeter seam allowance all the way down to the base there. And I do sew that two times because we're going to be adding stuffing. Do also make sure that the start and finish of all of your seams that you back and forth with a couple of stitches to secure it. So when we go to do our centre back seam in exactly the same way, of course, we're not going to sew that opening. We're just going to sew from the neck edge down and back and forth and same here. But here is where our tail is going to go. So we're going to drop that in so that that's caught in between those layers in that seam as we go and do make sure that you sew back and forth over that section so that it's held well and make sure that it is all still lined up as you do that. So four millimeter seam allowance. I have my uh, jeans needle in my machine and I do have my machine stitch length set to a number two so it's nice and small. 
You can now go ahead once you've sewn both those seams and press them open and flat. It gives you a much better finish in the end. So this is our front and our back. So at this stage, you can go ahead and put those right sides together again. And the seam we're going to sew next is that inner leg seam. It's just a very small little seam. And you want to make sure that you've lined up that center point. So perhaps pop a clip in there or a pin and we're just going to stitch with that same four millimeter seam allowance from the base around. Make sure that you really make sure that that's really nice and secure. So that one two times that same four millimeter seam allowance. There you can see that center inside leg seam stitched and I've sewn it two times, it's nice and strong. And we don't clip that seam in dressmaking. You would probably clip that, clip that seam, but because in uh, soft sculpture, we keep our seams very, very small and so that we don't have to clip them because it would definitely compromise that seam. Um, once we add stuffing, we need it to stay together. So the next thing I've done before we put this one completely together, I've added my buttons for the front. I've popped my first one about five to six centimeters from that top neck edge, because remember we've got pull in around that joint and you want to leave a little bit of room for a neck ruffle or perhaps a little scarf. So I've got those two there. So now we're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew up those side seams, which of course they will match beautifully. Just popping my clips in there right the way down the side to the bottom of that leg. And we will sew that four millimeter seam allowance two times, just the same as before. So the final step in putting the body together is we're going to add the foot pads to the, the little base of the leg there. So we're going to put right sides together. It's just like pinning in just a teddy bear foot pad. You can start anywhere because it's a circle. So we're just going to take our pin and we're going to go through all of those layers, flip it over and catch a little bit on the other side. Push that pin head all the way down. This is the easiest way to pin in a foot pad. Start to follow that curve. Pin through both of those layers, flip it over and just take a little bit up on the underside. Pushing the pin head down just clamps it all into place. Just going to make my way all the way around. It'll fit in beautifully if you've kept to your four millimeter seam allowances. There we go, all pinned into place. My next step will be to take my needle with an extra strong thread on it and I'm just going to overcast that foot pad into place so that I can remove all of my pins. So I've now removed all of those pins and you see that little foot pad is, ta is tacked into place. I now take um, some extra strong thread, a single strand with a knot in the end, and we're going to sew that foot pad into place using a stab back stitch. I'm gonna put the link at the top of the screen there for you to my video that shows you how to sew this stitch but I will show you a couple of stitches here. So I'm coming in from the underneath with my needle. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make two stitches, one right on top of the other, just so my start point is nice and secure and nice small stitches. And so now you see how I'm holding that out flat. I'm coming up from behind and just traveling along the length of one stitch and going back into my last exit hole. So again, I'm gonna come up from the underneath, traveling along a little way and back into the exit hole. Because it's extra strong thread, we're sewing it back and front. It's the strongest stitch of all for hand sewing in soft sculpture. So each time you just have to make sure you go back into that exit hole so that the stitch is fully linked. And you should be able to create a line that's just as accurate as you would on the machine. So you can see 
I'm just going to make my way right the way around that foot pad and then I will just repeat with the other side. You can go ahead and turn that one through once you've sewn those foot pads in and do take your time to roll out all of those seams, particularly around those feet. So we've got a lovely rounded finish. And that's our body. That's the way we put the body together on all of the animals in this series. Regardless of the tail that you pop in there, they're all put together in the same way. So now we're going to move ahead and make the arms. So the arms in this case, that's one that I've already made and I'm making it in the colour that I'm using for the head. So we've looked like we've got a nice naked little arm and this is the romper. So very simple to do, just pop that one aside and bring this one in. So I've got my piece of fabric folded right sides together. I've pressed it nice and flat and I've traced around my template, arm template, and I'm going to stitch exactly on that line all the way around. And I do reinforce the lower edge by sewing that section again. Leave that top edge open, make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish, and then we'll come back to cut that one out. So now that is all stitched, I just need to cut that one out. So straight across the top there. And then I'm going to cut approximately just a four millimeter seam allowance right, right the way around the edge and again we don't notch or trim this seam we don't clip the curves because we're giving it a very small seam we're going to be stuffing this and we don't want to pop that seam open So before I turn this one through, because I used a heat erasable pen, I can now take that to my iron and press that and it will remove those marks. And then I'm gonna turn that through. I've gone ahead and turned that arm through and now we're going to add our filling. Now, just like I have with this one, we pack the end of the arm really, really firm up to about the wrist and then soften off. You can see not much there and then nothing for about the top inch and a half because when we add it, we want the arm to sit nice and soft at the sides. If we fill it right up to the end, it'll stick out. So just go ahead and tuck that filling in that top edge there. In that opening. Easiest with forceps. Take that right down to the base there. Support the end there, but do pack that hand and wrist very firm. Continue up nice and firm and then soften it off and, and then nothing up until here. Once you get up to there, just bring those two edges together and just stay stitch on the machine across the top to hold that all together. Next, we need to go ahead and add those arms to our body at the top of the neck on each side. So you need to first of all make sure that your little hand is curving towards the front. And we're going to take this straight edge here and we're going to line it up with our center seam, sorry, our side seam here and make sure that it is just exactly halfway. So here's my side seam, and we're just going to tack it to the top. I'm just using my extra strong thread, just to hold that into place, line it up with the top exactly. And it must be right on that seam and centered so that little arms hang correctly at the side. So these tops of these arms will be pulled in when we put the neck bolt, when we put the head on and the arms will come out from that neck shoulder section. So it's a great way to add these simple little arms.
So I've just got that exactly in place. Make sure it's very secure. Because the top edge here won't be seen, it'll be drawn in around that bolt. There we go. So as we pull that in around the bolt, that little arm will be caught up in that next section. So I'm going to do the same, make sure you line it up on the other side seam exactly in half and stitch the other one into place. My next step is that we sew a doubled strand of extra strong thread, a running stitch just four millimetres in from the edge, starting at the back, leave your tail ends hanging and sew right around that top neck edge, including those arms. So now I've tied my first knot and I'm just going to pull on those thread ends and pull that in. So we want to leave just enough room for that bolt to pass through. So just a small opening there. Our disc is 45 millimetres, so it's going to cover all of that and then knot that off at least four times. I've just dropped that neck bolt in there to temporarily give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So a little head will sit on there, arms will come out from there. It's a really simple way to add arms um, with that little, with an animal that is suitable for it. So a nice chunky animal like an elephant will work really well. So we can put that one aside and now we're going to get started on making the head. So the first thing we're going to do we're going to take our two side head pieces and we're going to put them right sides together. And I always overcast these on the head because it's very important to get these all straight. And the first thing seam that we're going to sew is the lower side of the trunk from the start. And we're going to sew up and around down to the base of that neck. Do be careful to make sure that you sew that two times and reinforce on your curves and your start and finish. It's that same four millimeter seam allowance. So that's my first seam stitch and I do sew that one two times, one right over the top of the other. So our next seam is from this mark here that you've got on your pattern piece and down to the front tip of the trunk there. We leave this section open. So exactly the same four millimeter seam allowance and sew that two times. Okay, so it now if you have overcast those sections like I have, just remove your overcasting stitching just from the ends of the trunk there so that we can press those seams open and flat just with your fingers because now we're going to squeeze those together and we're going to bring those two center seams to meet up and you want them to be nice and flat. So I like to take a clip and pop it in there and just leave that there just for a couple of minutes. It'll help flatten it out for you. Then I'm going to take my needle again with my extra strong thread and I'm just going to overcast that front curve and then I'm going to stitch it on the machine, the same four millimeter seam allowance, and I will sew that two times. That just closes the end of the trunk. You can see there that that has the end of that trunk stitched and everything's nice and flat. So now we're going to add our center head gusset. And again, if you've had, if you used an overcasting stitch here, just remove those overcasting stitches so that we can open out that seam. It just does make it easier for getting this all lined up right. Now I've put a little mark just four millimeters in from the tip here, and that's going to help me position this point exactly right. I'm going to take a pin through that mark, and then I'm going to take that pin straight through at the seam allowance, that center seam there. And you do want to make sure it's coming through exactly through that center seam because this is a point at the front of your elephant's forehead and we want it to, to, be, be, to be positioned correctly so that it all meets up lovely. So really push that one into place there and then we're going to bring the side around to line up. 
take our pen through and pin that gusset all the way and I'm working on the gusset not on the side headpiece. I'm going to line that up all the way down to the back neck edge. You can see that all pinned into place there and if you've kept to your seam allowance well you'll see that it will fit perfectly. So now I'm going to overcast that seam and I'm going to stitch on the machine from that exact little spot that I made, no further, you don't go to the edge here, just to that spot and stitch that one into place. Again, four millimeter seam allowance, two times. Once you have one of those side head pieces stitched in, now we're going to do the same with the opposite side. So we're just gonna pull that one across and you can see that that's all going to line up beautifully and we're going to start our stitching again right on that point. So that way at the front of our elephant, we're going to have that perfect Y section um, that is all connected up. So make sure that you always sew just to that centre point. So now I'm going to just repeat the process with that side. You can now go ahead and turn that head through and make sure that you very carefully roll out all of those seams. So you've got the beautiful curved trunk there, up in this tight section here and the little front. Check that your little V section worked out and it was all nice and accurate. And now we can start to fill the head. So of course we're going to take our forceps and we're going to start by tucking that stuffing right in around that corner to the front of that trunk. You want to pack this head super, super firm. We want nice full cheeks and a beautiful front to that trunk. And we want that trunk to be beautifully pushed out and curved out. So really pack it firm. It makes adding your eyes much easier and putting the rest of it together much easier. So I'm going to fill it nice and firm right up until the top edge, just a little way from the edge. If you have a wool felting needle, by all means use that to pack your filling in to keep it nice and tight. And we will come back and I'll show you how to add that neck joint. So here is how that head should look all filled out. So filled out those cheeks beautifully, lovely rounded trunk there, and it's very, very solid. So. If you're going to be using safety eyes, what you'll need to do is just to softly fill the head first and determine your correct eye placement and then unstuff the head, pop those eyes in, clamp them in and then restuff the head. I'm adding just uh, teddy bear eyes, so I add them after the head is filled. So I have got that packed really firm and nice and flat. I've used my wool felting needle in here and then I've gone ahead and sewn a gathering stitch in a doubled strand of extra strong thread starting at the back and leaving my tail ends hanging just about five millimeters in from the neck edge. I've tied my first preliminary knot and now we're going to slip that joint in and it is very snug. You have to actually manipulate that in and push that one in and we're going to tie off those ends. And we're going to pull that in as tight as we can around that neck bolt. Once you've done that, knot that off at least four times. I've still got my needle on, so I tend to go around another time and then knot that off again. So it's really secure. And now that we have that head completed, let's go ahead and make those ears because I find it's better to have the ears ready and done. It helps us with our eye placement. So pop that head aside, bring in the ears. So this is the completed little ear, nice and soft and floppy. That's exactly what we want. So you just put those two pieces right sides together and we're going to stitch around the entire outside edge of the ear, just leaving an opening at the side there. You've got your marks on your pattern pieces there. Make sure that you back and forth on your start and finish and on your corners because we want a perfectly turned corner at the top. I only sew this um, one time. It's not being stuffed, so we don't need to worry about any pressure of that filling. 
Right, so I've gone ahead and turned that one through that opening that we left and pressed it all out, made sure all those seams are pushed out, given it a good press. And then I've just sewn, just on the lower edge, a top stitch all the way around, just to give that nice finish, nice professional finish and keep all those layers together well. And then we're going to fold it at the top and we're just going to fold it. Remember, this is your inner ear. This is what we'll be showing. And I will just simply give that a press and then I'm going to stitch across just to secure that just as I have here with this one. Next, we are going to position those ears on the head now that we've got them all stitched up and top stitched. Now the ears actually sit on the highest part of the head. So you can have a good look at that positioning there that I've got. You don't want them sitting too far forward and you don't want them sitting too far back. So they've got to be right in the right spot. Um, but you can see there, it's just as it hits its highest point. You've got a little straight section there. So your pin should go in just below the seam line here. That's the start of your ear. And then you want to pull the back of the ear up to just come past that seam line. That's going to angle those ears to hang beautifully. So once you've got that all set, you can stitch them on in whatever way suits you best. I'm going to sew mine on with a blanket applique stitch because I don't mind those stitches showing. So I've got a single strand of extra strong thread to match. I'm coming in underneath the ear where that little knot won't be seen. And I'm going to come out right on the edge of the ear. I'm coming out through the head. So fold that back over and I'm going to take one stitch in through all the layers and come out again right on that corner point. That's not helping me, little elephant. Pulling that one through and I'm going to take my needle through the loop. So that's going to create my first stitch and hold that into place right at the back corner of the ear there. So I'm going to do one straight over the top of that one. So then I can remove that pin. Again, bringing my needle out through that loop and really anchor that back corner in, take that pin away and then move along just a little and come out right on the edge of that ear through the head just a little way along. So it's just a blanket applique stitch. It's just that we're doing it on a 3D object. Move a little further along. So that way the stitching becomes part of the design. If you'd rather just slip stitch the ears into place, you can go ahead and do that. But I just find doing it this way, it actually gives it a nice little hinged effect and they tend to sit really well. Just make sure that you are catching all of those fabrics through the head as well and really pull down on those stitches. So that's securing that nicely and we've got that nice little blanket applique look. So just continue on and make sure you do your two stitches on the front corner, then do the same with the other ear. So our little elephant can hear us now, so be kind what you say about her. So now, but she's still a little blind elephant, so we need to add her eyes and eye position as always is very, very important. Now where you'll find these eyes sit is the base of the eye is level, the best position for it is level with your point there. So that's an easy way to judge it. Don't have those eyes too close together because elephants eyes do sit really at the side of their head. This is storybook, so we're going to pull them in a little closer um, to be a bit more pleasing and a bit more animated. When we pull those in, that's going to be a really sweet expression. So make sure that you've got them lined up either side, that they're nice and even. 
and I've made a mark there for each of them. These are eye tester pins that I use. You can just use normal pins if you like, if you don't have those. And I've made a nice deep channel with my awl straight through both of those heading back to the same spot at the back of the neck. So now we've got our glass eyes with our little shank on the back. I'm going to take a doubled strand, a very long doubled strand of extra strong thread. And I'm going to find the center of that again so that I've got four strands. Fold that loop over. I'm going to pass that doubled loop through the shank of that eye. Open up that loop and take all four ends back through. So that's knotting it permanently onto the shank of that eye. Now we've got four strands, so that's really nice and strong. We then thread that eye onto our large doll needle, which I already have with the opposite eye. You can see there, I've got my long doll needle, and I'm going to take that needle straight through that eye socket, following that channel I made, and I'm gonna come out just above the base of the neck there in the center. Pull that eye all the way through. Make sure that's tucking in nicely. Pull that in and you can see how that eye is going to pull in nicely. What I do like to do here is not the end of this one because it does help me isolate each eye when I'm tying them in. So I also create a slightly larger hole. So I'm not breaking any threads. So I'm just making that hole larger with my awl because I'm now going to go ahead and thread the other eye onto my doll needle. And I'm going to take that through in the same way. And I'm going to come out of the same hole because we're going to tie these eyes in to the stuffing, not the surface of your actual little head. So let me get that one through. So I've got both of those eyes threaded through, both coming out of the same hole. I've tied one single knot. And now all we need to do is with our thumbs, push on those eyes and we need to continue to tighten our knot at the back as we do that. And it's a bit of a balancing act. You've got to find a good spot to be in. You want to really push those eyes in, keep the tension up, knotting that off. And when you've got it nice and tight, tie your second knot, keeping that tension and then knot it off about three to four times. When you go ahead and snip those thread ends, they will disappear into that hole in the head. Lovely, eyes all done and beautifully sunk and even. So now we're ready to put this beautiful girl together. So we're gonna bring back our body. And all we're going to do is simply feel into that opening. We're going to take that neck bolt through and we're going to add our wooden disc on the other side. Make sure you have nothing caught in between those layers except what should be there. Hop on that washer. And that nut. So we finger tighten for now and make sure everything is where it should be. So what you're going to see so we've got those arms, make sure those little arms are coming out at the side. But nothing's caught up and nothing is caught up between these layers. And then we can, can start to tighten that up. Because you have got the arms within that joint, you will need to make sure that is nice and tight to bring in all those edges together. Again, check everything is secure everything's sitting right and then I'm going to tighten that up it should be tight enough that you can just still move the joint it will slacken off in time 
I will use my forceps to tighten that up. You can use your spanner, whatever you like. And then I will add one drop of super glue just in here in the threads of uh, that bolt and nut so that that nut will never come adrift. And now all we need to do, of course, is stuff the body. Now that this is all put together, a beautiful little elephant. I'm loving this one. So what I start with is I will take my forceps and I will fill the base of the feet and make sure that they're packed really firm. Now, because of the style of this um, design, you could pack that body really soft. You could have a really squashy, cuddly body or you could pack it quite firm. I love the shape of the body when it's packed out firm. It's lovely and rounded and chunky. And of course you all know, I do prefer to pack everything that I make nice and solid. And so I'm gonna take my forceps down into the base there. And the first thing I will fill out are those beautiful little foot pads. So even if you're stuffing it quite soft and cuddly, do fill out the base section well so that those foot pads stay nice and rounded. And also remember to really stuff and pack in around that neck bolt so that you've got everything's nicely covered. So I'm gonna pack that body out. I will be using my felting needle to tuck everything in, fill it right up to the edge, then we'll come back and close that opening. So let me get, give you an idea of the filling in this one. Now you can see that there's still some squash to this body, but all of those beautiful curves and shapes have been filled out. So little feet are all filled out nicely. We've got some softness here, little bottom where that tail pops out there. Got all those lovely curves pushed out, but for a child, it's still soft enough to give a lovely hug and a squeeze. So I think that's a good balance for this body. Because it's such a simple style, you're never going to get this section packed out to be absolutely crease free. But the little tucks in the fabric there and the, and the back is all part of the design. So don't feel like it's got to be absolutely perfect because this look is just so lovely, that little cuddly squashy look. So let's go ahead and close that back opening, which I have got all ready because I've taken my wool felting needle and tucked all of those fibers in. I've got my single strand of extra strong thread with a whole pile of knots on the end there. Now I will put a video link at the top of the screen there for you to show you my ladder stitch video, but I'll do a few stitches here to show you. We're going to come in right where that seam starts to open out at the top. Now I will say on your pattern, this opening is set a little lower down to make it easier for you. I do make these minor adjustments as I go. So pull that one all the way through so that knot holds and then we're going to travel across. Let's just turn her around. We're going to travel straight across. We're gonna dive in the other side at our seam allowance, which is still that four millimeter and just travel down the length of one stitch. Pull that one through. So we've got one stitch going across. We're going to go back over to our starting point. We're actually gonna go in that hole where we made that knot, travel down, still keeping to our seam allowance. And we can squeeze those threads, those sides together and pull on those threads and that starts to close. Back over to the opposite side, going in that exit hole. Each time you must go in that hole that you just came from so that it's all linked. Again, each time giving that a squeeze and a tug and you can see that it's starting to close that opening. So I'm back over to this side, traveling down just, keep your stitches nice and even so that you're closing each side evenly. You don't wanna get down to the bottom and you've taken bigger stitches one side because you'll have puckering at the end. So again, squeezing on that and you can see that opening is going to be closed. Do check out that video for a much closer look um, at the whole process. 
but I'm just going to continue on going back and forth until that back opening is fully closed. And now the fun part is adding a couple of little accessories to finish her off. So what I've done, I've just added a little crochet flower with a little silk flower on top to the top of that head. And I've also added a neck ruffle. Now when I designed this body pattern, I felt that they wear and something around their neck really beautifully. So whether it's a little boy with a scarf um, whether it's just a ribbon tied, of course, because this one's an elephant, we've got a lot going on with the trunk and the ears. I've made that beautiful little neck ruffle because I'm going almost for that little circus look. It's very, very sweet and I've made it in the same colour as the body so it looks like it's all part of the same set of rompers. There's so much you can do with this pattern, I can't even tell you how excited I am about adding to this series. So. I think you'll agree they're a very, uh, very uh, friendly doll in that fantastic for making up for craft markets. Absolutely fabulous if you're using um, safety eyes to give to children, babies, nurseries. They are a little companion doll that I feel um, that is an alternative to my other cloth dolls that you've seen um, where I have, I think I have the fox, the bunny, um, the bear, I think that's all. Um, there's another series there. Now the neck ruffle is from that original series of cloth dolls. You'll find that in my playlist and it's just a measurement but I do have a video that shows you how to make that ne neck ruffle. It's very, very simple. There's just so many different things you can do with it. Little boy elephants using flannel. Flannel pajama material works fantastic for this pattern, for the softness and for hugging. So I think this is going to be a series that I'm going to love adding to um, for you all. So I'm looking forward to creating, I'm already thinking a, a beautiful little pig, um, a cow, Definitely a hippo, a raccoon, so there'll be many more I can promise you and we'll definitely do a lovely chubby bear. So I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it all for you um, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do with this beautiful little elephant pattern. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my little first in a series come together. We're certainly going to be adding to this series. So you can chat to me in the comments. You can tell me what other animals you would like to see like this. I'm already thinking of a little pig, a hippo, a raccoon. I'm sure that you've all got a million ideas there. Throw them my way and I will see what I can do. I'm looking forward to seeing all the little elephants come up this week, hopefully in our Pay It Forward Facebook page. Come along and join us in that group if you haven't already. And you can see all of the wonderful creations that everybody is making with my patterns. And you can also chat to me on Instagram if you would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, by all means message me there. I'm definitely going to uh, see those messages if you do that. I do try to get around to everybody, um, but Instagram is the best way to capture my attention. So you can see that uh, is my Instagram address there. In the meantime, if you would like to step up and create something a little more challenging, you can join my masterclass and I will put the link down below there as well. Also the link for our Facebook page. So everybody have a fantastic creative week. Post lots of pictures of beautiful, colourful elephants, boys and girls. I'm looking forward to seeing little boy elephants. So have a fantastic creative week, everybody. Stay safe and pay all of those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.